So let's talk for a little bit about our taxonomy lab and review some things as you get ready for your lab exam. So taxonomy is the science of classifying living things. Now, every level in the classification system is called a taxon. That would be the singular. And then if we're talking about multiple, tax taxa would be the plural. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the person who was sort of the father of this science or this branch of science is Carl Linnaeus around the 1700s began to classify things or group them into categories. And he had three kingdoms that he classified everything in. Now, what we use today is different than the system that he first developed, but it uses the same basic um, idea of putting things into categories based on their relationship. So what I'd like to start with is let's talk about how are, what, what, um, how do we differentiate living things today? So the, the largest and most inclusive grouping that we have today would be the domains. Okay. We have three domains of life. So everything living falls into one of those domains. Now those three domains are Eukarya, Bacteria, and Archaea. Now there are other differences obviously than what I'm going to tell you, but the main things I want us to focus on are, first of all, the type of cell um, of organisms that, that are in those three domains. So eukaryotic organisms all go into this one domain. So what remember, eukaryotic organism means that these guys have membrane-bound organelles like a nucleus, right? A mitochondria, a chloroplast. Anything that is made up of a eukaryotic cell goes in that domain. Well, bacteria and archaea are both made up of organisms that are prokaryotic. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, these these cells don't have organelles. They're sim they're simpler. They're smaller. Okay, these organisms in these two domains are also single-celled organisms. So we're talking about microscopic organisms. Now, one thing I want you to know about archaea is typically these, we would call these extremophiles. So they live in high temperature, high salinity, right, in, in conditions that normal organisms wouldn't be able to survive. Now, this is the most inclusive grouping. In other words, everything fits into one of these categories. Now, we get less and less inclusive, right, in, as we go down to, to finally a specific species of an organism. Now, I also want to mention to you what, when we say species, what do we mean by species? Well, we'll talk about a, a, an individual species being organisms that can, that can mate and reproduce and have viable offspring. So that will be the definition that we're using of what, what would be considered the same species. Okay, so from domain, okay, from that point, what comes next? Well, this is that acronym that I want you to remember. So um, your lab book had one. The one that I always use is King Philip came over from Great Spain. Okay, so if you just use the first letter for each of those words, it will help you go from, after domain, from kingdom all the way down to species. So the K then would be for kingdom. So if we think about, let's say the domain Eukarya, okay, there are four kingdoms within the domain Eukarya, plants, animals, fun fungi, and protists. And we've talked about each of those, and we'll, we'll get to the review for those in a second. And then next will come phylum, okay? And after that, class, order, family, genus, and finally, 
down to one specific species. Now the other thing I want to mention here is when we're talking about a species it's always a two-part name okay binomial by meaning two and so for example let's talk about um, whoops the puma con color okay I'm gonna underline it because it either needs to be underlined or italicized this would be the scientific name for this type of cat now there could be more than one common name we might say a cougar or a mountain lion okay some other common names and that's why we we must have a scientific name so that it it identifies one specific species and it does away with the fact that we have different common names right for one particular animal we also have common names maybe that are for more than one type of species so we might say an oak tree well there's lots of different oak trees right so each one of those species of oak is going to have their own two-part binomial name all right now um, phylogenetics is another area within taxonomy that really looks at um, the relationship historically um, of organisms and specifically most recently is using molecular biology DNA RNA protein to compare the relationship of organisms and um, your lab manual explained that typically they want to use our RNA or ribosomal RNA when they're comparing and that's simply because all cell types are going to have our RNA okay different cell types will have different types of mRNA um, or tRNA but in this case our RNA would be the one that would be most likely conserved across all cells so easier to compare from any type of living organism now let's spend just a minute and go through um, some of your lab activities that you went through this week so the dichotomous key practice dichotomous key is a fancy word for meaning you have two choices right so you have a question and you either say yes or no this or not okay so we're gonna do a couple of examples of this dichotomous key so here were all the organisms that you were asked to classify based on the, di the dichotomous key below below excuse me so we're gonna do a bird um, and a mammal and a plant so we'll start here with this guy letter I and let's go down to the dichotomous key we'll go through and see how do we end up with the appropriate binomial name or species for that picture all right so notice dichotomous key meaning we have two choices right it's either an animal or it's not an animal yes a bird is an animal so that tells us go to number five now in number five we have two choices it either has a backbone as a vertebrate or not yes birds in fact do have an endoskeleton so then we go to number eight okay does it have fur or feathers well in this case it has feathers so we have to go to nine all right does it have a long sharp beak or a short triangular beak now in case you don't remember let's go back up and have a look okay I would say long sharp beak all right so that tells us we need to go to 10 if we go to 10 we have another question about the beak is it a thick multicolored beak or a thin needle like beak well it's certainly needle like we'll go to 11 okay and now we are at our final choice either there's red coloration on the crown or there's green coloration on the tail and just to make sure we look okay there is no red coloration on the crown but definitely we see green coloration on the tail so we have used the key to classify that organism okay Celesphorus platycircus. So we we're done with that particular organism. Now I'm going to erase our my markings on the key so we can start with our next organism. All right, so let's go with this guy here. Okay. animal yep go to number five backbone 
Vertebrate, yes, go to number eight. Fur or feathers definitely has fur, so we're done. Moose musculus. Okay. Third one we're going to do is this plant. Okay, this guy. All right. So animal or not? No, not an animal. So that tells us go to number two. Does it bear fruit or nuts or only flowers? Definitely we saw those berries, right? So that's a fruit. So go to number three. Nuts or fruit? Well, we didn't see nuts, but we saw fruit. Go to four. Yellow or red? Well, we've completed this one, right? Because there was obvious red fruit. So hopefully you were able to do that. If not, now you know how to use this dichotomous key. We are going, and remember, when you're writing these, notice that they're italicized. So when you're handwriting these, you want to make sure you underline them because those are binomial names and we always want to italicize or underline those. So in this next exercise, you were going to classify these organisms, okay, based on this chart here. So we'll start with E. coli. That's our first organism. Okay, now you have to be to recall that E. coli is a bacterial cell. So we need to know that so we can answer these questions. So start, does the organism have a defined nucleus? Well, since we know that E. coli is a bacterial cell and we know that bacteria are only made of prokaryotic cells, they don't have any organelles, so no, we would go this direction and we're done, right? It tells us that we in fact are in domain bacteria. Define nucleus, no. Is it modal? No. Does it photosynthesize? No. So let's do the next one. Let's change colors. Let's do the protozoan. Okay. Now you have to sort of recall about a protozoa that it is made of a eu if eukaryotic cell. Okay, a protozoan is a protist. So remember, they fall, there's a kingdom, right, of protists within domain eukarya. So does it have a nucleus? Yes. Okay. Is it modal? Yes. Protozoans are modal. Does it have specialized, oops, I need to scroll down. Does it have specialized cells? No. These are single celled organisms. So we end up with domain eukarya, okay, and let's see what else we need to put here. They are not photosynthetic. What kingdom? Protista. Okay, next, mushroom. We'll do one more of these. The mushroom is a fungus, and we know that that's a kingdom, right, within domain eukarya, so they do, in fact, have a nucleus. Is it modal? Nope, nope, mushrooms aren't jumping around right in your yard. Does it photosynthesize? Some students get mixed up with this, but no. Um, fungi do not carry out photosynthesis, so no. Here we go, kingdom fungi, domain eukarya. Okay. And we're done with that one. Not modal, no photosynthesis. Are they unicellular? Okay, some fungi are and some are not. So we're going to put yes and no. Some are and some are not. So that's our review for the taxonomy lab to prepare you for your lab exam. Hopefully that was helpful.